Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Metal Jesus Show. Here's your host, the fantastic, bodacious Metal Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, everyone. Anyways, to congratulate this fantastic event on this Metal Jesus show, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Two hours later. Ow! Oh, hey. Anyway. Does that hurt? Remember that episode of Star Trek when Captain Kirk fought the lizard and he was like, ah! And he was like, ah! That was a good episode. Ugh. 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 Ah, it's big in my throat. Yeah. But anyway, that was a good episode. Do you know John Stamos is afraid of midgets? Of midgets? I find that hilarious. You can see the hilarity in my face. Yeah. Oh, oh, what are you doing in my house? I'm your new guest star, Randy. Oh, hey, Randy. Randy. You're looking pretty good with your... Well, Randy... You have nice nipples, Randy. Want some customer service? No, I would not, but do you want to review a game? I would. Okay. Well? Why are you here, Randy, on the Metal Jesus Rocks television show? Because I got fired from all my jobs, and I'm hoping you'll pay me. Hmm. Okay. Well. I'll pay you if you can think of a game. Maybe a Disney game that was around the 16-bit era. That starts with an A, ends with an N. What do you think? That could be... Anakin? Oh, it's Aladdin! 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 That's what I was thinking, too! With Disney's animated film Aladdin having been a hit at the box office, it was clear that video game adaptions would follow quickly as some sort of tradition, that is, and that is especially true for Disney-based games. And oddly enough, two completely different Aladdin-based games were eventually developed, one for the Super Nintendo by Capcom, and one for the Sega Genesis by Virgin Interactive. With the famous Dave Perry, I like that name, leading the development team. And his involvement could really be seen throughout the entire game, because it turned out to be one of the best games for the Sega Genesis, in my opinion, a lot of people's opinions. Following the plot of the movie pretty well, you take the role of the movie's main character, Aladdin, on his quest to save his loved princess Jasmine from the clutches of Jafar. In order to accomplish this, you have to fight your way through several big levels based on locations from the movie, accompanied by his pet, Monkey Abu. At first, it looks like a typical jump and run game, you know, like Mario or something. But you'll notice quickly that it's not the case here. While the game follows the basic concept of basically every jump and run that came before it, the differences lies within the small but really significant details with the most obvious one being the very design of each level. Instead of just simply running from the left to the right through simple and linear level constructions, you have to face some complex and sometimes even tricky stages that astound with creativity, especially in terms of gameplay variety. No matter whether you have to collect flutes in order to use strange flying ropes, or whether you are going for a ride on the magic carpet, you definitely won't get bored throughout the entire game. 
Also, unlike the Super Nintendo version, there's a badass sword. So, props. Naturally, you also have to face tons of enemies on your way, with the majority of them being the palace guards of Agrabah. Instead of defeating them by jumping on their heads like the Super Nintendo version, you fight either by using your sword, like I previously mentioned, the scimitar, or by throwing apples at them, which was also in the Super Nintendo version. That's also a really nice little change from the usual, and the scimitar fights with some of the guards can actually be pretty fun. There are also some boss fights in this game, even though I have to tell you that they are incredibly easy, and it's possible to beat most of them without even getting hit. However, that does not mean the game is super easy. Actually, not at all. Unlike its Super Nintendo version, Disney's Aladdin, not Aladdin, on the Sega Genesis can be pretty challenging due to some difficult jump passages and persistent foes. Fortunately, none of this will get frustrating anytime soon thanks to the awesome controls and a fair amount of continues. The only really negative part of Disney's Aladdin I can think of right now would be the length of the game. Really, there aren't many levels, and even though they might be pretty long and complex, you can still manage to beat the entire game within a few hours only, at least. And there isn't much gameplay replay value involved except for your will to play through it once again. Nevertheless, Disney's Aladdin is a joy to play with so many things to do and find. Honestly? It's a little tough to find the right words to describe the visuals in Disney's Aladdin. Because awesome... Well, actually, it's just awesome. The graphics in this game are some of the best on the Genesis, and it just holds up really well. The animations in this game, and the way the characters move, are just really fluid and smooth, and just makes the game more fun, they're not clunky at all. Musically, Disney's Aladdin mainly features renditions of the classic themes from the motion picture, and all new themes as well. The sound capabilities of the Genesis hardware weren't exactly stellar, especially compared to Super Nintendo, so most of the pieces don't even come close to the quality of the movie. And some people might even be disappointed by the rather low quality compared to the movie. But judging it as just a Sega Genesis game, the music fares pretty well, and the tracks always fit the atmosphere of the current level perfectly. The sound effects are equally good, having some funny little touches every now and then, and there are even some rare voiceovers in every now and then. Even though it mostly comes down to a come on under by the palace guards before they attack you. To anyone who's a fan of Genesis, I can recommend this to every single one of you. Whether you're an Aladdin fan or not, chances are that you'll enjoy this game due to its sheer brilliance in terms of design and gameplay. And due to the simple fact that this is by far one of the best games on the Genesis, one of the few that actually managed to live up to the movie. And in the end, it even turns out to be better than the Super Nintendo version. While a lot of Disney movies have had a plot that was pretty far-fetched, Aladdin's story was one that could actually happen in real life. Why does your voice sound different? Uh, I went through puberty again. Aladdin, a poor boy, is used to being a thief in order to get food and to live to the sea the next day. He meets and falls in love with Jasmine, who just happens to be a princess, and his world has completely changed. Aladdin for the Super Nintendo follows the same storyline as the movie, so yep, it's yet another one of those Rescue the Damsel in Distress games that we've come to know by heart. But don't forget the other thing about these games that use the worn out Damsel in Distress plot, almost all of them prove to be very fun. The Super Nintendo's version of Aladdin is just like other fun Disney platformers such as DuckTales or Chippendale Rescue Rangers, in that it features basic platforming action with one or two things that make it different from the others. For instance, in DuckTales, Scrooge McDuck bounces on his cane as a way of defeating enemies, and items such as diamonds and cakes pop out of thin air anytime you're in the right area. In Aladdin, you'll be defeating enemies mainly by leaping off their head, but Aladdin himself strives to be different in a way, 
Instead of literally jumping on an enemy's noggin, he springs off the top of him with his hands, throwing many of them into the air as a result. A couple of things that take place during the gameplay of almost every level is unique too. For one, Aladdin can find a carpet laying on the ground somewhere. If he can locate it, he will be able to use it to his advantage for the rest of the stage. By pressing and holding R while you're airborne, you'll make Aladdin hold the carpet over his head to catch air and slowly descend down towards the earth, making for a safer and more precise landing. Even cooler, in most levels you'll run across a treasure chest. Hop on top of this chest and a golden bug that resembles a beetle will pop out of it and then fly towards the top of the screen in a circular pattern. If Aladdin can catch this hypercrater and then complete the level in one piece, he'll go to a bonus stage that features a spinning wheel for a chance at some extra lives, a continue, or something else that could be of help. There's a nice array of levels to do your venturing in Aladdin. You'll start out in a city full of golden brown buildings, big and small men that shoot arrows or just runs towards you, snakes rising out of pots and more, using your carpet to glide through the air as you explore the fearsome heights, collecting gems and bouncing off the countless numbers of enemies but your adventure only gets better. Soon you'll be swinging from fragile hanging rocks and crystal blue underground caves as you time your dismount to land on floating logs in order to keep from drowning. Hop on a magical flying carpet as it's the only way you can possibly escape the monstrous flow of lava that is chasing you. Once you meet the genie, take a break from danger and explore the graphically beautiful stage in which you'll be doing more jumping from place to place than two squirrels in the heat that are chasing each other amongst the treetops. After so many levels are completed, you'll face an easy boss such as a slashing sword wield guy or Jafar in the form of a towering snake. As expected, you'll be taken to a screen that gives you a password from time to time, and part of the storyline will unfold by the aid of well-drawn pictures and readable words. One thing Aladdin really has for it is its graphics. Each level is very well designed and the characters, especially Aladdin, have very good animation and look fairly detailed. Certain parts of the game are just plain gorgeous. You'll see what I mean if you go to the bonus stage in which you ride a carpet with Jasmine over the night sky full of flashing stars. The short treasure level that has pairs of swords that come alive spinning through the air, hungry for some human blood is memorable as well. As is the multi-layered city of Agrabah. And if you think these places look good, just wait until you see the genie stage. You'll probably be a few seconds upon seeing this stage for the first time as you check out the background. The sound effects are your basic run-of-the-mill hop and bob sounds, with none that really stand out being better than average. The music on the other hand is pretty good. If you've ever seen the movie, you'll probably recognize a few of the tracks, such as A Whole New World. The ones that aren't heard in the movie are rather nice as well. While controlling Aladdin, you'll do a lot of jumping, swinging from various ledges, rocks, and other items, and floating with your carpet. Doing any of these things along with performing other actions such as moving around while on a speeding flying carpet or throwing apples at enemies to stun them won't cause you any frustration either. Aladdin is an all around great game except for a couple of things. For one, it has to be one of the easiest games in the world. It's not hard at all to get through the entire thing without even being in a rush. You can beat it in less than 30 minutes. As a matter of fact, it's not even that overbearing to beat the whole game without being killed once. The other failing attribute is that the quest is really short. But there's one thing that almost makes you overlook these two assets. Aladdin is downright fun as it is, but trying to collect all the red gems in a level isn't easy, let alone gathering up each and every one for the whole game. The urge to see how many red gems I can collect from start to finish is the thing that keeps me coming back to this cartridge time and time again. It might not be an all-time favorite of yours, but it'll always be a solid title to spend some quality time with when you're bored and you just want a little bit of fun. This is a Super Nintendo.
Just do it! Just do it!